Hello, and today here we are at a fantastic showroom. This is Mr. Resistor's showroom itself, and it is their trade outlet. However, they also have a retail outlet in the King's Road and amazing online service. So anything that you see here in the showroom is available online, or you can go and visit, or you can come and see it. They are a superb setup. Now, let's go and have a chat with Lee, who's in charge of this organization. Lee, thank you very much for having us here today. It's been marvellous to have a look around the showroom already. I know we're going to have a look further. But really, I wanted to say, how did you get to here? Because it's an amazing operation. I mean, oh, I've known you, you for quite a few years. But to be perfectly frank, it has grown and grown and grown. What's your secret? Um, well, I've got to put it down to my mum and dad who've, and, and, and their partners who started it in 1968. Um, it was their kind of idea to open a shop right. to make people aware of modern lighting, down lighters, spotlights, track. So really, that was the beginning. I was very fortunate that I worked with my dad sure. since I was very young. Um, and obviously, with the first shop opening in 1968 in Fulham, we've just progressed. We had to get bigger space. We had this idea always wanting to do lighting design. So in 1999, we moved across to Wandsworth to have our warehouse. Um, but basically, the, the, they were always very passionate, my dad and his partner, John Wise, and, um, and John Bloomfield, uh, he was a, another partner of ours. And they just took it, to, they just were so passionate. They always wanted to do nice lighting in people's houses. And in those days, it was just pendants and wall yes. lights. There wasn't <laughs> any, any accent lighting. No. Um, and this is how it all started. And since we just got more and more people that wanted more advice, so we had to get a bigger showroom, we had to have a bigger warehouse. Now obviously online's come along, and this is what we've done now. We've, we've just keep on improving, and we've also made all our own products to a level. And we do other people's products, because obviously we always want to sell the right product for the right job. So our products may not always be the right product, so we're always gonna put forward in the lighting design the right product, and that's what we do. And I think you also have a lighting design team here, don't you? Exactly. So, so over the last eight to 10 years, we've had a lighting design team, and we have three or four people who can do the AutoCAD drawings, or if some people want lighting design done differently, they just want some advice, they can come to the shop for advice, they can sometimes have a consultation, which is a couple of hours with our designers, or they want to have a full spread lighting design because they've got controls and they want the proper drawings for the electricians. Sure, yes. And that's really important because if you can't, it's all very well to design something, but you've actually got to give the trades, the electricians, the information so they can actually install it yeah. correctly so that it works. And with today's uh, amazing control systems, and I mean, yeah. they are amazing, um, you need people who know what they're doing, really, don't exactly. you? Exactly. I mean, we always say, get the lighting correct in the house first. Where, you know that it, it, you also need more detail. You need layouts of the room so we can get the position of the fittings correct. Yes. Then we can then tell people how to advise to turn them lights off. Most people, in some cases, just want a simple control. Sure. But when it's a, a, a house where it's open plan and there's a garden, um, you, you need to have switches which can change the lighting in both rooms. You know, we call the garden a room as well as the the, 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 yeah. the living space. And, and, that, and that's how we do it. So we try not to make it too complicated to switching at first. We work out the lights. Then once we know the lights and we know the circuits, then we can advise on a very simple dimmer to a full-blown control system with iPads. Yeah. It, it depends on, on the customer. Some people just want a few circuits and some people have got a lot of circuits. Sure. And lighting today really has grown in the dimension of interior design. I mean, I'm not a lighting designer, I'm an interior designer. Exactly. And I spent many, many years actually coming to you here at your desk and going through a plan and, and actually specifying all the fittings for Correct. those um, uh, those schemes. Yeah. Um, and your advice is absolutely essential. And I can honestly say you can learn so much at a school but actually doing it and experiencing it. And touching it. Touching it, feeling the lights. The showroom Turn, here is great. Turning them on, seeing, yes. the, seeing how powerful the light bulbs are. A lot of people are not aware that, obviously, with LED now, we've got so many different types of LED yes. lamps. 
and some are as not as bright as others yeah. and don't have different beam angles. You can't create the atmospheres. When we were doing halogen yes, many moons ago on, now, yeah. it feels, we didn't have that conversation. We had the different beam angles and it was a bit easier. But now with LED bulbs, they're not all the same. No. And um, I'm just going to ask you about that, actually, because yeah. everybody, the buzzword is LED, as if it answers every question and it can't answer every question there are uh, they're light fittings for lighting jobs yes and they're different aren't they yes i mean obviously everybody wants led so obviously in 1995 when we first see the led and obviously the man who made the led in the 60s who used the led as just an indicator light in the beginning and it was a green or a red led he couldn't actually produce a light so obviously when it was this light emitting diode that was created when electricity passes through the circuit board and the semiconductor emits light it was like the an, a wonder of the world sure. but the guide only could use it as an indicator light right. so yeah. obviously in the late 90s when the blue led arrived with using the blue and mixing different phosphors and paints basically onto the blue right. we could produce the different LEDs okay. and then obviously then the LEDs gone from strength to oh, strength absolutely. and the lumens has got brighter but you are quite correct a lot of people don't use the older light sources the fluorescent tubes and the, and 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 the metal halides we still they have a place but at the moment the word is LED is. everybody's trying to get all the tennis court lighting in LED okay. they're trying to get all the Sainsbury's and all the departmental stores to have LED strips instead of using fluorescent tubes. Yeah. So they still have a part, but obviously everybody wants LED. And with LED, it's so flexible because it, 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 you it can does so much. mix color temperature, you can yeah. change color, you can now, it's digital, and, and you can address the product so not all lights stay on. And then that's where the controls come in because they're building the, the LED uh, uh, drivers inside that are intelligent. So these lights control automatically. Your phone, as you pass by, can make the lights change color or change a different brightness. Or if you're looking for a jumper in a store, it can lift up and be brighter in the store. So it's so clever, LED now. We, you never had all these options. I mean, to somebody like me, I find the lighting revolution so amazing. I cannot, as a, an interior designer, keep up with it because it's, it's galloping away with us all the time. Yeah. So really bringing in the specialist when you're doing a bigger project is almost, I think, it's, it's yeah. almost essential, really. Yeah. It is. I mean, I think there are things you can do and you, you can use your Google and you can do your studying and, and it's always good to do your research. Sure. But I think like coming to the shop, and I always say to people, if you come to the shop, we can turn the lights on. You can see the see lights. The lights yes. If you can see the light, then you can see the difference straight away. You can't have that experience going on to Google. No, of course um, you can't. Um, can you explain to me, because people don't actually appreciate, and I, I find this a lot, that there is low energy fittings and there are LEDs and they are different fittings. They're both low energy to a certain, yeah. to a certain extent, but we have, um, for instance, in my kitchen, I have low energy fittings yes. from you. There's the square variety yes. and they're low energy, but they're not LEDs. Obviously, yes. I mean, obviously before LED, to, to achieve low energy, we would use fluorescent. And those fluorescent tubes obviously use a certain amount of power. You know, some tubes can be 50 watts or 58 watts, depending if they're a linear tube or an L tube or a yeah. 2D shape. So they were very efficient. But obviously now with LED, they're even more efficient because the power is half of that. The transformers and the drivers, you know, which is the same thing, they, they are more efficient. So everybody now I don't really want to buy that technology now sure. because it, it's kind of moved on and they when you exp try to explain that fluorescent may be even better but it's still not what, it's they, still want. Not what they want yes. um, but there are a lot of people that are still using it because you can change the tube the advantage of lamps and fluorescents is that if we want a white and we want a warm we can change the lamp so sometimes with led you have to choose the color unless it's a an LED that has two whites. So then that's quite complicated because they can't make a decision. But you're right, there are basic fluorescent tubes and compact lamps that have transformers in that are still very good to use on the low energy side. Sure. But the, 
that every time someone comes in, it's always LED now. I mean, a few years back still, everybody's still buying compact fluorescents because they were the most reliable, the LED weren't quite there. But now the LED, we it's have there. OLEDs, we have SMD, we have optic lenses. Everybody's now going to that. It's very difficult for us to sell any of the old technology now. Okay. But okay. you are right. They are man enough for the job yeah, and sure. you should use them, you sure. know? Okay. So in domestic situations, we've also got building regulations to consider because they're now making it even more tough on us. We have to be eco-friendly. Yeah. And so the LED industry is really leading the way and yeah. helping us dramatically keep to what they're asking us. Yes. Um, so, I mean, LED obviously is, is the buzzword and will continue, I think, along those, those lines. I think so. I mean, obviously, we don't know what's around the corner, if laser or anything else might come out, but at the moment, LED's getting smaller, LED's getting brighter, and you can do more for more things with LED. You know, as I say, you can put the chips inside that you can control from your phone or a switch, and you can do so much with it. One light can be four products. It can be warm, it can be cool, it can be colour. So this yeah, is a, this is options. Amazing. Going back to the efficiency, I mean, obviously, 10 years ago when the lamps were made, the LED, some of them never met the part L. Okay. And obviously, the reason for that is that the lumens of the LED wasn't, wasn't bright enough and the wattage. So we had to meet something like over 50 lumens per watt or 40 lumens per watt. So obviously, that wasn't, you couldn't do that. So all our LED lamps that we sell meet that efficiency. So you are allowed now to buy a retro bulb and to put it into a fitting as long as it meets Meets it. So domestically, that's the that would be the rule. But commercially, they would want more, more, yes. more efficiency. Yes, I mean, essentially, we're looking at the domestic scene here. Um, but something else I wanted to ask, which I noticed in one of your brochures, was dynamic white. Yes. Uh, which was replaced, which which works with the GU10. Yes. Um, fitting, yeah. and it changes the colour of the LED, which yes. I was absolutely gobsmacked when I read. Yes. So what we've got there is obviously we have different LED GU10s, different colours of the white, starting from 27K, which is like a candle light. If we, lit a, if we lit a match, it's that kind of shade. And then obviously we have 3000K, which is a slightly warmer and it's a crisper light, the light that we're under now, as you okay. can see here. Yeah. And then we have a cool light. So really those lamps are the real main sellers. But now a lot of people are looking for a lamp where when you dim it, it can dim very warm, so it starts off a, a very crisp light, but then it can dim, dim down to a very yellow light. So that is very popular as well, but mainly the standard 27K, 3K, 1000K is the more popular for us. Okay. We have the technology of the dynamic white, like you said, where you can choose the white. So the advantage of that yeah. is not only are you dimming down, but you can say, right, today at night, eight o'clock this morning, I want cool light and I can turn that on, and then in the evening, we want to live in a warmer light. Yeah. So that, that technology is getting more popular now. Um, it was new. Yeah, when, yeah. I, when I read that, I thought, well, actually, for a domestic situation, that's actually particularly relevant. Yeah. It would work very well. You can do that a number of ways. You can either do that with lamps. You can either do that with LED strips yeah. um, or small LED panels. Right. Um, but generally, those kind of products are more for the commercial. LED strips are very popular. We saw a lot of those people put them in furniture. And they're building, everyone loves to build shadow gaps now yes. to have invisible lighting. So with that product, you've got the best of both worlds, you know, and, and we do specify that, Debbie, yeah. a lot. And um, something that I, I try to explain to customers is that you do not want to look directly into an LED Correct. light. It should be... Um, immersed in some form of a, uh, a, baffle. a baffle or it's got some Honeycomb. diffuser or something. That, a frosted lens. A frosted lens. Because they're not nice lights to look into, no. are they? No. I mean, obviously, the, there's people that design downlighters and obviously we've come a long way with downlighters. You know, a lot of big companies who have put down lighters where the lamps are sitting higher up. So we always advise that we don't want to see the light source. Sure. So there's always either going to be a baffle or there's going to be a honeycomb or a slight little hood on the light. Or in some cases where we want the light to be very diffused, we use a frosted lens. Sure. So you're right, that, that is an important thing. People don't consider that. They buy a down lighter 
and it doesn't have any of those features. Yeah. And that's important in yeah. our case. And also there are, I hate to say it, but there are a lot of cheap fittings on the market and there you pay for what you get really, don't exactly. you? Exactly, you do. I mean, obviously, you know, some downlighters, people that, that are designing, they've not come from a background or foot with the interior designers, we have. So we know that our interior designers, they're, they're very fussy on how the, the downlighter looks. Absolutely. They want a chamfered edge, yeah. or they want the right paint finish on the downlighter, yeah. or they want it trimless. Yes, and the trimless then, plastered in. And, and, yeah. um, and that, that, that is why some of the, the basic downlighters, not, they don't really give you the effect, no. you know, and, and it is important to choose the right fitting for the job because some houses are more modern some houses are a bit more traditional but then it's making sure also putting the right light source in inside that lamp how, how bright you want that lamp to be you've got higher ceilings you need brighter lamps yes um, and, and and that's important to choose the right lamp I mean very often people say okay where do I position my my lights and I say well how high is your ceiling exactly what are you trying to light exactly um, pictures we need, people we, are always we, need we need a rough layout even yeah. even even if the layout's not set out 100%. in 100 percent because yeah. then we can position the lights and then we can then get a cost and then we can then obviously upgrade it because sure. everything evolves but I think I always tell everybody to make sure to try to get some planning yes. of the kitchen so layout the more information we know if we know you love art we want to light your yeah, art. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. that's important. So I really, people should do a lot of homework on their, on their house, even if it's not 90% there. Yeah. If they've got it 60 or 70%, we can then start creating the lighting plan. Fantastic. I mean, your music to my ears because people don't understand. I had a client the other day who said to me, um, we've just finished, we're just finishing off our extension. Yeah. And when somebody says that, it means to me they've plastered. I mean, once you've plastered, look. we're then going to have to chase through that plaster to start installing cables exactly. to run their fittings. And also, your I need to know less. your choice is less. You've got to be more generic and less specific. Exactly. And also where your furniture is going to sit. And almost more importantly, we need to know the colours. As an interior designer, yeah, exactly. I need to know what colours people are working with. Exactly. You've got colours here and every colour will look different yes. under different types of lighting and scenarios. And some people put darker finishes in on the floor, so you need a few more lights. Sure. And what we're finding now is if people are using LED strip for the general lighting, sometimes we use less down lighters. Sure. If they're, if they're using the strip as a, as, a, as a glow, they put a few more down lighters in. And, and exactly, if we, if we have floors that are dark and we don't have enough lights in the room, then we're, we're, we're going to foul. We're yeah. going to foul. We're you know? in trouble then, really, exactly. aren't we? It's too late. I mean, there are some retrofit ideas and I loved your pendant retrofit on the yeah. GU10 yes. because that allows you to something where you normally would have a, yeah. a GU10 you can take it out and you can retrofit a, a pendant exactly which I mean, is amazing in vogue is the cotton cables you know which come from yeah. Ireland at we buy and um, there's other people do them and that's a great idea because you know with the downlighter you can change it you can have a different look sometimes you can't decide on where your pendants are going you sure. can't decide on your decorative yeah. lights and with these in vogue lamps that are coming we didn't have all them because now we have LED we have tinted we have clear we have nice shapes and they look like rocks they look like globes you can do so many things, things. but you, you, with that, you can, it's just a quick changeover. So you you don't need an electrician, you just plug it in. And it, and it hangs. Exactly. And there has been, and I've always suggested to people, lighting is a combination of decorative and functional yes. fittings. Yes. It's, it has to play with each other. You've got to have your functional um, fittings because they do things. You don't see the light source, you see the effect. Yeah. But your beautiful lamps or your beautiful chandelier, yeah. it still has a part to play. I mean, with, with, with the type of lighting we've sold since 1968, we've really concentrated on you know, the effect lighting, the down lights, the spot lighting, yeah. the accent lighting, the controls, the dimmers, and um, laying out the lighting. Pendants are always a personal choice. If a customer says to me they love their pendants and they've got a vision, I'm still putting some down lighters in, but I'm not putting so many. Yes. Because the down lighters give us the accent lighting. Sure. So when we walk into the room, we look at this wonderful pendant, but we've got these lovely pools of light, and that's key. It is. And some people don't, they think, 
you, we get so many people that put too many down lighters in. Yes. And, don't, and then down lighters get a bad name. Yeah. So I agree with you. I have lots of types of lights, but I, I do like my decorative lights and I do put cables in. And sometimes I put a couple of extra cables in if I'm designing because then I've got You've the got flexibility. flexibility. Yes. We don't know if that table is exactly going to be there. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But the GU10 socket where you can change to a decorative pendant with a bulb is a brilliant idea. It is. It's clever. Yeah, I love that. I loved that. The other product that I was quite interested in uh, was the Auric Decor uh, where you can get um, indirect light which actually floods over a ceiling. Exactly. It's really interesting and the way that that comes over because that's a combination of decoration and function as yeah, well. you're right, Debbie. I mean, with that, I mean, the scenario we have with that, it is a fantastic product because it's lightweight, it's DIY, and it's very easy to install. It can be fitted to the wall. We, we get so many jobs where sometimes we're not allowed to go into the ceilings, sure. and, and this kind of product can be placed up on the ceiling. You can put the dynamic strip, you can put the warm strip, and you can then put a, a transformer that can be dimmed. We have wireless switches that you can place somewhere. But the great product about that is that they are your shadow gaps. Yes. They've made your shadow gaps for you. Sadly, if we're doing a job right from the beginning, we, and you haven't done that, you have to use that. But if we know that you like the idea, we would build the shadow gaps. Yes, yeah. And sure. sometimes people don't have to the train fault to do that no. so that's where the auric comes in it's brilliant for that it's a, it's a brilliant retrofit yeah. and um, i've just written a blog actually and i've included auric decor in my retrofit yes. blog because to me it's one of those it's one of and the gu and the yeah. uh, gu 10 pendant because those two items really work very well i mean I they know. have skirtings as well where yeah, you can put retrofit strip skirting and then you can have lighting, lighting there, going yeah. through a hallway where you wouldn't be able no. to fit that yeah. and, and and that is the advantage of led it because is. We couldn't put any old filament rope light and it was too hot. Yes. It wouldn't last. Yes. It would be dangerous. Be dangerous. Now with yeah. LED and strips, we can do so much so more, much more. you know? Yeah. I mean, it is fantastic to talk about all these different things. Obviously, there is cost involved. Yeah. And, um, and you rightly mentioned earlier that if people can just have a basic, simple idea of where things are going to go, then we can be more effective as to where we place lights. Yes. So really, the more homework somebody does, yes, I would always suggest. Then the better, as designers, we can be yes. by giving them precisely what they need, yes. without adding cost unnecessarily. So you know, and some people might want a control system like the ones we're looking at on the wall here. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty. They're not going to be cheap. They're they're, they're quite an expensive operation. Yeah. They need professional uh, designers yeah. to program. Them. I mean, I mean, t we have two markets. I mean, some people want to just have a conventional dimmer or a conventional wiring in a wall. So electrician, if he goes to school, he's going to learn to wire and he's going to put the cable in the wall. Um, if we don't explain to him that we're going to use a different type of dimmer, he's going to wire that way. If you do wire that way, you still have lots of choice. There are dimmers that can go on the wall. They can be very simple dimmers that just turn or push. push yeah. But obviously, th these dimmers now have wireless inside. Nice. So these dimmers can speak to your phone or they can, can be controlled with another wireless switch. I mean, one of the ones that we always kind of sell, which is really good, is if a person has wired a bedroom and it has a standard dimmer on the wall, the thing that you don't generally do is put the switch near your bed because you don't know your bed position 100% or you don't know where the switch can be, the cabling can be placed because you don't know your bed head. Yeah. So the simple one is you can wire the dimmer and use a wireless switch. So we have very simple Wish systems. I'd known about that. <laughs> very simple That's systems. That's a really good idea. Okay, Lee, we've learned so much uh, initially, but let's talk about controls yeah. and also wireless because yeah. Obviously, that is really, um, I know my techo clients really love wireless. They yes. love anything that, that's got lots of buttons they can press. They love it. But um, tell me, there's different types of control, wireless controls. Yeah, I mean, first of all, we listen to the client. As I said from the beginning, we do, we get the layout. We, we, we make sure the right lights have, are in the position. We then think, oh, do we want this down lighter to come on this painting, which we get the circuits. Once we can work out the circuits, then we put forward 
a couple of ways to control the house. And we put forward what we think. We become the devil's advocate. We say, right, they can do one option, okay. can be wireless. Yep. One option can just be a hardwired dimmer. Yep. A, a customer just might love just a standard dimmer. They might want a Cat6 cable to place so they can have illuminated switches. Sure. But generally, most of the designs we're doing where we're having six or more circuits, which I generally think is my kind of number okay. if it's a few circuits it, i use a simple dimmer but if it's more than a few circuits it's so complicated to control and we use wireless okay. so the reason we use wireless is that the switches can be placed exactly where you want them yes. at the end of the job if you want them to yes. the advantage is that you can also have more than one switch okay. from any switch you can program any type of effect and if, as a lighting designer, you have wired these switches exactly where you want and you don't use a wireless system, you can't, can't change, change the, where the switch goes. Yes. I mean, I have wireless in my house. My whole house has wireless switches. And the, the funny thing was, I'm sitting at home, my wife says to me, oh, well, you thought of everything, Lee, but I don't have a switch behind the kitchen where the island is. Not a problem. I went to the cupboard. I, I, I pulled out a wireless switch. I copied it. I placed it on the wall for my so wife. So simple. <laughs> exactly. She's a lucky lady, I have to be honest. She's so, super. Two-way dimming now becomes complicated. Three-way dimming becomes it's even more, more complicated. complicated yeah. Placing switches near the bed, because we yeah. don't know if we're going to have a bed head, etc. Me, that train of thought is eliminated with wireless. Okay. So we only need a receiver. So the receiver is the product that has to be connected to the lighting circuit. That can either live in the ceiling if it's a retro, job if it's a more professional job we know exactly how many circuits and we're rewiring we replace the receivers in a cupboard okay. and then the switches will be wireless a lot of people say to me how reliable is this well we've been doing wireless now for 20 years okay. we'd started with wise box in gardens yes. we do many other people's products there's a new product called lutron ra 2 which is very popular now our products are popular they're both good it also depends on the person as well who prefers the switch. Some people like the design. As you know, being an interior designer, the client wants to look at the switch that yes. they like. They feel safe. Exactly. Yes. Some people want small buttons, some people want bigger buttons. Yeah. But generally the reason why we like people to use the wireless is the simplicity, but also the cost effect. You do not have to run cables to the wall. There's less wiring to yes. be used. So this speeds jobs Dramatically. dramatically yes it would that would really help because first fix is always a bit of a pain and you've got plumbers as well trying to first fix and you've got all sorts of things going on AV and everything so if you can eliminate some of that it's gonna it's gonna save time on the job I mean the switches are the important thing to us and then people say oh does it work with the phone yes it does all the all the controls work with the phone and with these phones now we have the timers yes. the timers become a great aspect in your life you, your lighting can come in automatically you're away from holiday you can turn lights on for your friends if you want to but generally it's not so much turning lights on for your friends it's the timers you can set the timers to create all these lighting effects in your house in the garden and it turns off automatically yeah. but so you don't leave something on yeah. which is wasting the small amount of power that actually it is using yeah, but we always like to use the wireless in our lighting design generally because of the ease yeah. and it's so less complicated we do not have to tell people on the drawings where the switches have to go no. logic prevails that you have a switch near the door but we don't have to tell them it's up this high this low sure. we can put as many as we want the spec and is different. it's very simple and if you change your mind and you want to turn on the pendant from the switch you just change the program it's a very simple procedure you delete and reprograms very simple I mean one of the things that we have as designers a problem is that people have a habit of changing door swings <laughs> yes and if it's a fixed wired um, yes. uh, switch they've got to walk round the door exactly. to actually turn the light become on it, it, can, it can be annoying yeah it, and, it is annoying and, um, and then they say why was that switch there but, yeah, we, but it's because they've changed the door the swing has changed yes, it. I mean true. the things evolve and of you don't have do. any of those problems I love the bed one. Everyone wants to dim from the bed yeah. or turn their lights off. Yeah. And if you've got to place a place of wiring up on a bed, you've got to be specific where that's yeah. going and the height. You know that with yeah. wall lights either side it. of the bed. Yeah. It's a difficult one. And do you know, I hate to say it, I love electricians, but getting those wall lights absolutely level. Yes. <laughs> it's not easy. You've got probably a slightly dippy ceiling or a slightly dippy floor. So where do you go to? It's exactly. Just, and there's always a problem. And do you know, it's the first thing I notice. If yeah. I walk in a property and the lights aren't quite meeting up and to other people, it's frustrating. It's you're annoying. correct. I mean, you, you're, you'll get those wall lights correct because you're always 
placing a wall like it's in jobs like that, you know. But with the switch, that's even more complicated because do you want it lower? Do you want it higher? Sure. You know, and, and, and if you can say, I can place that switch afterwards, yeah. you have that eliminates, that flexibility. it eliminates all these other things that we have to worry about being designers. Yeah. It's, that, that's why I like to use it. Fantastic. Well, look, I'm really looking forward to building my new house <laughs> because that's actually now given me inspiration to move on, do something new and use wireless. Lee, thank you so much. Yes. This has been absolutely fantastic and so enlightening. I thank really you. appreciate it. No thank problem. You. Any time.